It has been a very busy couple weeks here in West Virginia, so I thought I would bring you along, kind of rewind, go back in time, bring you along on this fun adventure, and I uh, hope you enjoy. But first, a quick introduction in case you just stumbled across this channel and want to know who I am. Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with beeswax and a torch and because it's mixed media, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Consider subscribing and joining this artsy community. Don't forget hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded artsy folks like yourself. Good morning. It has been a uh, kind of a strange week of getting random things done around here. Haircut day. Tell her how lovely she looks <laughs> so I can keep my day job. <laughs> um, first, I went and got the new booster shots and that kind of took me out for about two days. I was just really feeling not very energetic, pretty achy, you know, the normal stuff. Um, nothing major but um so the first couple days were really just kind of spent editing video and things like that just nothing that took a lot of energy and then um we spent a little bit of time in the pole barn but it's really cooled off a ton this week and it's just been super chilly out so i definitely think fall is here I feel like we're really starting to prepare for winter around here. Um, so I'm really glad that spray foam guys should be coming soon. I'm hoping to video some of that, but I'm not sure um, about like, you know, you're not supposed to be in the area when the spray foam is happening. So I don't know how much video I'll get because um, I hear the stuff flies everywhere. And I also don't know if they're going to allow us to really look and see what's happening. I did manage to get two more shelves stained and two more of these shelf brackets spray painted. Um, so you could see black on the bottom, somewhat black, <laughs> and uh, stainless everywhere else. So I did manage to get those done. In case you missed last week's video, I'm putting these shelves over on the back wall and I have some already here, already existing shelves, and I wanted to add two more in this corner over here. So anyways, getting back to why I came in the studio, which is this mess here. I'm hoping to get it more organized, put up on the shelves that are up, and, and I'm hoping to put those other two shelves up over there. That is today's plan. So it's been about an hour and while it may not look like I've done anything based on the floor and the stuff that's still on the counter over here I'm actually making some progress let me show you I, I decided to take out um, some inks and the supplies that I actually had in 
these rolling carts. And then I'm, what I'm putting in these rolling carts are some various materials that were in plastic bins and put into a cabinet. And I have found that if it's out of sight, out of mind type of mentality. So all this is like hand dyed paper and collage material that I actually really enjoy using. But I find that I don't use it if it's put away. And then what I have on this cart is natural items like seeds and um, feathers and you know, pine cones and dried flowers, various natural items. And again, they were in a cabinet, but what I found back in the studio in Ohio is when they were behind the barn doors, I just forgot about them. So I'm hoping in this studio, even though there's actually less square footage, less space here, if I have more open shelves and more stuff just out and not tucked in behind things, it's going to look messy. <laughs> yes, I guarantee you it's not going to be pretty all the time. But I'm hoping I will remember to use things more and use the supplies that I have on hand. And um, yeah, I've got a bunch of ideas rolling around in my head for creating um, as I haven't been creating for the past several months. So I'm excited to get to using some of this stuff. All right, first I have to apologize if you hear that revving engine outside. Um, some of the people down the street are doing a bunch of work and um, of course bad timing <laughs> for me to decide to pick up the camera and speak into it. Um, the good news, however, though, is um, the studio is getting there. And even more exciting news, which is why I picked up the camera and I'm going to leave it kind of in the state that it is, is that the uh, spray foam guys are actually coming tomorrow. So um, that's really exciting, but I have to completely switch gears and get into the pole barn and finish cleaning that out. Matt's going to hopefully stop shortly for the day and this evening and come in and help me out. But um, I thought real quick, I'll flip the camera around and show you what I've got done. Again, you're probably gonna have to look through some of the mess because there is some uh, areas that are still just a mess. All right, so first up is I reorganized the book area down below of this card catalog and um, that has all the vintage stuff in it. And I'll do a better studio tour here shortly, hopefully. But um, just for what I've gotten done today, I've reorganized some of those books. Also reorganized this cabinet, added some of the taller books over here that didn't fit underneath that um, card catalog area, which is why that got reorganized. And then, um, just th this was full of those collage bins and I, like I said, reorganized those earlier into the rolling carts. This desk area is slowly getting cleaned out and cleaned up rather. Um, I still have some stuff on it that I'm just not sure where I'm gonna put, but um, we'll, it'll get there. And then coming around to this side of the desk, that is a box of records that um, is probably not going to stay out here, but it's out here for now because there's no other place to put it. And then this is just a box of empty bins, which I'm hoping to maybe use up in the loft area. And again, that loft area is just still full of insulation and various materials that really doesn't need to be in the studio. But um, again, just waiting for the pole barn project just to um, put that in. The desk area and printer stand area is still very much a work in progress. I still have to get all of this stuff into the studio, but um, I did find <laughs> this one that I painted years ago. And so I thought, why not just throw her up there? Little reminder. And then lastly, this is that shelf area. I don't know why this isn't focusing. Hopefully the camera is focusing and not just 
acting up here. So these shelves have, this shelf happens to be journals that are complete. I thought I would take a second to flip through some of these journals, thought maybe you would find it interesting. And if I use anybody's technique or anything like that, I'll be sure to try to link them below, but I'll in the very least mention it here. And this particular fabric journal was a class that I took taught by Susie LaFond, who is an amazing art journal and does some really neat things with fabric scraps. Highly recommend you guys checking her out. At any rate, I think this was a journal from 2016, might have been even later than that, might have been 18, but I used it kind of as a scrapbook slash art journal, and as you can see, it's an accordion style journal, and it flips back and forth, really fun little technique, and they're small pages, so they don't take up too long to fill up, but I kind of recorded um, different months, different events that happened throughout the year in this little journal and it's just kind of fun to flip back through and then going down a shelf these are journals i want to continue to work on and hopefully fill up and then a bin of fabric scraps you're going to see that these journals are quite empty and um, i've used some for encaustic and some for mixed media but i'm gonna flip through here real quick because they won't take long this one was a faces journal and i may still use this to draw faces although i don't find portraits and faces that um, interesting to paint to me so but you'll see some of these pages are so empty but i do want to use this journal for something and then this next journal is a collage journal, a mixed media collage journal. And this, I had so much fun doing. Some of these pages are some of my favorite pages, like these with these funky little girls on them. And I use some pretty fun sayings in this journal. So I really want to get back into it, whether I do mixed media with it or... I use this as an encaustic collage journal. I definitely want to get back into this journal and maybe do some more funky kind of unique things. And you'll see some of these pages are very much not completed. And then I also have a lot of empty pages. And some of these, I even had some sayings picked out that I wanted to use to finish the pages. But like I said, a lot of empty pages in this one as well. And I also use this journal just to scrape off leftover paint and um, kind of not waste the leftover paint. Then this next journal is also a fabric journal and a class that I took by, again, Susie LaFond. Like I said, you guys, I cannot recommend her enough. She's an amazing artist and use of fabric scraps are amazing. So anyways, getting back to this, I use this just to put some random random pieces of collage material into. And my thought process here was I was going to do, try to do like a quick collage page a day. Obviously I have not done any of that. So I want to definitely get back into doing this and whether I glue it into that collage book or I just use these as pages themselves, separate pages. I'm not sure, but I want to definitely get back into it. The last journal you may have seen me using throughout my encaustic process, and this is my encaustic journal where I basically scrape off any leftover encaustic paint onto this journal. It's a very messy journal. Some pages have been collaged. Some have drawings on them. But I, I want to get back into this journal and finish some of these pages, maybe do some more doodling on them, maybe some encaustic collage. And again, lots of empty pages along with this journal. So um, this is this one is very, very, very unfinished. And then here's some, uh, of course, art materials that I use, art supplies, pan pastels, and all the inks i use these pretty frequently so they're very accessible this way and then panning down to this shelf these are journals that i use 
uh, to keep track of different projects and just kind of try to journal daily in them, which I have not been doing. I would really like to get back into it. And then some more um, art supplies there. These journals are meant for more um, business in a way and a little less uh, creative play. They're meant to have a way to document things and to also sketch some ideas out before I start an actual painting. These are also, this book and the next one I'm going to show you are two handmade books that I made out of old book covers and I thought that the title of the books were kind of unique but as you can see a lot of empty pages on these as well and um, just really meant for research on uh, these books are and kind of jotting down ideas and then I also have taken and printed out some different things that I want to keep in mind when creating paintings. So a lot of empty pages and a lot more pages to be filled, a lot more paintings to be created with these. I've also taken and printed out some photographs, altered photographs that I've done um, just as ideas for painting. So um, yeah, just places to keep ideas. And then this next journal is not one that I've made. It's a hand bought journal and I actually used it for one of the 100 day projects where I kept track of what paint colors I used, what paint colors I mixed. And that way, if anybody ever wanted me to try to recreate one of their paintings, I could and I would have the colors that I would want to use. And again, like those collage papers and art supplies, I'm hoping by having them out and accessible with these journals, I will use them a lot more and reference them more. And then panning over to this final shelf. These again are journals that are completed and then some more art supplies here. This last journal I am taking you way back to 2014. You can see I think I've um, come a long way in my art journaling process. Um, at any rate, it's really fun to look back at these and I used this as a little bit of an art journal, a little bit of a scrapbooking, um, just a mixture of things. And um, if you want to see more flip throughs of art journals, just let me know down there below in the comments. Um, this was a lot of fun and I had fun taking a look down memory lane. And then I can think you can see, I tried to measure out the shelves so that the rolling carts would fit underneath them nicely. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Um, I know it looks messy, but um, I'm okay with it. And then this is the big, nice big workspace. So, you know, I'll have all of that behind me or while I'm working and then can roll it easily, roll the rolling carts around on this floor. So I'm hoping it will work out. All right, so I'm gonna close up shop today here in the studio, head to the pole barn and start clearing that out. Um, I might pick you up, maybe I'll put you on time lapse or something while we're doing that. Um, it's not super exciting, we're really just <laughs> clearing stuff out of the way. All ready for spray foam tomorrow. Good morning. We have um, quite a few things on the list of things to do today and we're starting off in the studio and going to get the last two shelves installed on that back wall. So um, that is the plan for first thing this morning and then uh, we'll move on to the other things on the list. It's nice in here. It's Actually, nice, you still right? have a lot of space. Like, it's a big space. Yeah, yeah. Like, I think it'll work out. Yeah, it's a big change even. Just honestly cleaning this up actually is a huge change because this is where I thought, oh boy, I can see it. It's, it's overwhelming, like you said. But it looks so much better today even. It's definitely nice in here though. 
things. Like everything, like temperature and like all kinds of. It's a cool space. We've got those on hand, right? I think so. Good. Yeah, definitely. One done. And it's uh, quite the angle to get in there in between the mini split and the shelf. But one's in, one more to go. In case you were paying any attention to that previous conversation in the background, we really don't have a million dollars hiding in the studio. We would need to sell a lot more art to have that. <laughs> All right, shelves are up over there, and up next we are working on possibly winterizing a bit more of the studio, specifically the entry door into the studio. All right, so as you saw, the lock on this door, and I have another lock on the door, it's not just this one, but this just helps keep the top of the door shut. It wasn't sitting right. So Matt just had to drill the hole out a bit more. And now we're going to apply some weather stripping around the door just to keep the drafts from coming in. Uh, for the most part, if you missed the previous videos, we've insulated the studio really well and it stays quite nice and warm and cool in the summer. But there is a little bit of a draft coming in through this door because it's just not completely sealed. So a little bit of weather stripping and voila, we have a sealed door. No more drafts. I don't know if you can see here behind me, the um, spray foam guys unfortunately got caught up in another job. So they were unable to make it out. But um, we are doing a few projects in the barn anyways, trying to winterize a few things. And I have a new outfit that I've winterized myself with. Who would have thought you could find purple trousers or overalls? Coveralls? <laughs> what are they called? They're coveralls. Sexy, whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, this sexy man is in shorts. It's not winter yet. It's chilly. <laughs> See that gap way up there? That's what we're trying to close in a bit. You talking about the one between my ears? <laughs> no. Tiny, tiny ones. Just as good as that one. Those are, those are trust ones. <coughs> a box in there. This one. All these nails, and we can't find the right size. Up there still. I don't know if you guys can see, but it sealed up pretty darn good. And we went all the way across the top there, and of course down both sides. <laughs> sealed. Spray foam has been started. 
This is crazy, guys. It looks so different to me. <laughs> they are coming back this morning to finish the roof. Sorry about the dog barking dog out there. And finish the walls. But it has been started. It's so exciting. It was kind of a lot of fun to watch this spray foam expand. I was absolutely amazed at how much it actually expands. I didn't spend a lot of time filming this. Um, I didn't want to get in the guy's way. And I also did not want to breathe in a bunch of the fumes. As you can see, they're pretty masked up here. So I stood in the doorway of the barn in the fresh air and tried to zoom in and get you guys a couple shots because it was really fun to watch. I also really needed to get back into the studio and make one final push to get a few more things organized. Two more shelves, all organized. And I just wanted to show you these little spools here. Just in case you're interested in a creative way to store ribbon or um, twine or things like that, these are actually made out of um, toilet paper rolls. And I just taped some decorative fabric. I cut out a circle, obviously, on the top. Put, glued that down onto the toilet paper roll or paper towel roll, either way. And then put some decorative paper on top, some just scraps of paper, and then a couple of cute little flowers. And then now I have a kind of decorative way to store and display tiny pieces of ribbon and lace and things like that. So um, that's what those are in case anybody else is interested in making something like that. And then some of these others are just on some vintage wooden spools that I've collected throughout the years. And then of course I just have to display a couple other vintage Scissors, they actually don't really, they're not functional. They don't really cut through this ribbon, but um, it's just kind of a cool little display, I think. All right. I do believe I am pretty set up here in the studio. I mean, look at this empty space I got going on here. Just the griddles are out which hopefully means these paintbrushes will be getting put to good use very soon. I also managed to get the printer area set up and the monitor on the computer. I'm sure I still have a few more desk items in storage somewhere. In fact, I'm sure I have more desk items in storage somewhere. I just have to come across them. And for that matter, I'm sure I have a definitely more studio items in storage. Um, but for the most part, I'm pretty set up. This brown cardboard down here, I want to replace with um, one of those plastic mats. I have to bring my chair down here, my rolling chair. And I'm afraid it'll um, kind of scratch up or put dents in this um, pine flooring. So I just have the cardboard there for now. And then coming around to this area, this area has become a mess again. Um, those cardboard boxes are going to recycling today, so that will be out of here. But there is some tools and miscellaneous things like a random ladder, refrigerator, that won't be staying in here. We just need to get the um, spray foam done in the barn. And then all of that will get cleared out. That box there I still need to unpack and then if I'm spinning you around hopefully not making you too dizzy 
I want to get some sort of mat here for the front of the door, like a rubber mat or something um, during this rainy, wintry season coming up. I can come in and take off boots or shoes or whatever and put there. Um, so that cardboard obviously is temporary. This rug, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to leave here or what, but um, definitely need to get this space cleared out and then they'll give me a little bit better idea of what I'm doing over here. So I think this is where I'm gonna leave you for this video. I do hope you enjoyed coming along, getting organized with me in the studio and also winterizing our winterizing projects. Um, a lot to do around here, still a lot to do in the studio but it's really getting there. And I think honestly, the next studio video will be painting. So as always, if you like the video, you know what to do, give it a great big thumbs up. It really does help me out. Thank you so very much for following along. Uh, we will see you on the next one, hopefully a painting video. I'm not, I'm probably gonna take a week off um, there's a few other projects that we need to get done around the property next week and so I'm probably going to take a week off but then after that I'm going, I promise, I'm going to get to painting. <laughs> I know I keep saying it but I really really want to get in here and paint so um, hopefully the next studio video will be of me painting. If you're not subscribed consider doing so and joining this wonderful artsy community. If you're not getting notifications and would like to get notified when I release a new video, hit that bell down there and that will notify you. Um, just a quick little notification comes across your phone or via email and you'll be like, oh hey, Studio Stacy, new video, I can go watch it. All right, that's it for me. As always, thanks so very, very, very much for following along. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.